So I want to talk about the Java collection framework. Uh, this is the basically the set of libraries that Java provides uh, that contain the most used data structures. So almost any program that you write uh, that is really of any significance uh, will almost certainly use one of these or more uh, collections. So it all starts with the collection interface. Um, so this is a Java interface, right? Um, I'm going to use that to denote interface. These are all going to be interface anyway. Uh, the collection, so you think of a collection as just like a bag of things. It's, it's a collection of things that you have. So let's say a collection of letters. So, you know, I can have letters in there. I can have A, B, A, uh, C, D. Uh, so I can have just a bunch of letters in my collection. You can have the Z there. Uh, so the methods it implements, because I want to have stuff in my collection, I need to be able to add things to it. So there's an add method. And because I have add, I'm going to need remove too, because it gets rid, rid of things. So there's a remove method. These are methods that are defined by the collection interface. So I can add things, I can remove things. I'm gonna to wanna to know how much how many things I have. So there's a size method that's gonna tell me the size of my collection. Uh, another one is uh, maybe, you know, I'm gonna to want to find out, hey, is the letter M in my collection? Uh, so that is the they call it the contains contains method tells me if this collection contains a particular thing. And uh, I'm going to want to iterate over the items in my collection. So there's an it, you can get an iterator with using the iterable method. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can, so you can go to the actual documentation, which we're looking at here. Uh, this is the actual Java util collection interface. Java doc, and it tells me uh, down here all the methods that are implemented by this interface. There's add, uh, I just show you, contains, uh, there's the iterator, there's remove, and size. You can see there's a stream, which is a Java 8 thing, which I'll be talking about in a separate video. Uh, and there's they have, they have removal and these ones which take in another collection, which is very nice. So you can remove a bunch of things at the same time or more easily. Uh, is empty, you know, to see if it's empty, clear, we'll remove everything from the collection. Uh, and that's it. So this is the collection, which is the top level interface for all the ones you actually use. So you never actually use just a collection or, or rarely. Um, you'll use, uh, say for example, the set. So a set is another interface. Oh. So this is also an interface. Uh, so it, uh, all these are going to be. Uh, so that's the top level one, and the set is going to inherit from that, right? So uh, a set, or you know, because is this is interface inheritance. Uh, just like regular inheritance, that means it's going to inherit all those methods. Uh, but on top of that, it might have a couple more extra. So a set is, is a mathematical set, and uh, what that means is no duplicates. So a set does not allow any duplicates. So, you know, if you have a little set here, you add the letter A, then you try to add the letter A again by calling add A twice, uh, it's not going to add it. You're just going to end up with just one A. So that's a set. That's really the only difference. Uh, and uh, as such, uh, it's used generally. It comes in quite in handy, actually, um, to you know finding um, find all unique values. So, for example, uh, you might have a big file with a bunch of email addresses, and you want to there can be a Maybe there are a bunch of repeats, so the same address. Email address appears many times, and you want to find all the unique email addresses. You can just go have a little for loop, add them all to 
uh, the set and uh, the set is just going to uh, ignore any duplicates. So if you add the same email address twice, uh, whatever, it, does, it doesn't care, it's just going to be there once. So at the end, you're going to end up with a set with all the unique values. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, sets are very useful. Uh, another one is the list. Uh, think of a to-do list, right? So in a list, the big thing about the list is it's ordered, ordered, and ordered, and everything has, of course, an index, you know, as to that order, right? So when you add something to the list, I add the letter A, for example, uh, <clears throat> that's going to have my index of, say, 0. Then I add the letter F. After that, that's going to be a position 1. Then I add... Uh, the letter G, that's going to be a position 2, and so forth. Letter H, uh, I keep going in alphabetical order. And I have B now, yeah. So, yeah, the index, they have a position, right? Uh, so because they have a position, that means that now I can fetch things from a particular position. So the list, let's go to the documentation so I get this correctly. Uh, here's the set. The set, the set of methods that the set uh, interface implements is really the same set that's the collection implements. So not much new there. But the list is right here. So here I'm looking at it has add. You know, of course, it's going to have all the collection methods, but also has uh, there's index of. Uh, where's I wanted to, to show you get, right? Get. I can give it a number and it's going to give me, so I can say, give me the item at position three and it'll give me that item. Uh, I can do the opposite. I can say, what uh, what position is item this item? And it'll tell me that's the index of. Uh, so give me the index of this item. And there's uh, some other stuff to deal with indices and that kind of things. Um, and then there's set again. So I can, I can set the item at this particular index to be this thing. So that overwrites. So I can say set the item at position 2 to be M. So that will take, oh, forget about that. G is now M. So that's a list. Again, very useful. Uh, then we have the queue. The queue. So a queue uh, keeps things in the uh, generally the well, the simple queue keeps things in the LIFO order, last in, first out. So that means that you know I put uh, a queue is like a line at uh, the store. And you might have the grocery store or uh, the Apple store. Uh, so A comes in, he stands, he's now first in line, and C comes in. So you're adding things. Then uh, M, uh, and then. Uh, and see again, that can happen. Uh, so I add things here, and they come, they get added at the bottom. Let's say the end of the line, and then I take things off. I can only take things off at the top of the line. And the way I do that is using the uh, this is the queue. I'm going to go over here. Is using the poll method. So poll retrieves and removes the head of this queue. Uh, so I add things at the bottom, but I pull them at the top. It's a weird word, I think, but that's what they called it. Uh, I can also peek. If I want to see who's at the, the front of the line, I can peek without removing it. So pull actually removes them and gives them back to you. So there's that. Uh, also, uh, this one inherits from that. Uh, inheriting from the, from the priority, there's another one called a priority queue. I'm gonna I guess put it down here. Priority queue, uh, which is also a queue uh, inherits from this queue here. But a priority queue will keep instead of this one. Things are sorted by the order in which they came in. You add things, and a priority queue is sorted by something else. Uh, and you decide what that something else is using the, you implement your object has to implement the compare to method or the comparable interface. Um, so, something else. 
uh, namely, you know, the compared to. So you can define compare to. You have to define the compare, or you know, maybe it's defined for you if it's a string. Uh, so things are sorted by compare to. So that means, uh, for example, the top one. If it was characters, that would mean the top one will always be the one that is first in uh, comparison. So first alphabetically. Uh, so you can add things in any order, but the first one will be always be the smallest uh, letter, uh, the first one in the alphabet. If it was numbers, it will be the smallest number. Uh, typically, you use this. Uh, this actually comes in handy in certain situations, like when you're doing a discrete event simulation. But we won't get into that. Um, so that's that. And uh, there's also a deck, uh, which is a double-ended queue. Uh, which is just like a queue. So I'm just going to put it right next to the queue. So it's just like a queue, except you can add things at both ends and you can pull things from both ends. Uh, so those are the main collection ones. Now, the other very important one is the map interface that's also part of the JCF, so but not necessarily part. It's not a collection as such because it, it is a mapping from keys to values, right? values so it is not just a, a collection of things it maps keys to value and uh, so this is a lot like uh, an array right um, but uh, in, in, in an array you can only use integers in a map you can uh, use anything as your key so in an array you can only use the integer as the key value so let me go over here uh, to the map so to add things to uh, the map, you use put. If I have a map, if I already defined a map, I can say map dot put, and I can say I can associate say the name Bob with the number one two three. So now this map is going to remember that Bob's uh, say phone number is one two three, and then later on I can say map dot get. Uh, Bob and this is going to return one two three so that's what we mean by keys and values so you can associate you can say Bob is one two three and add a bunch of these and it's going to remember all those and then you can get them back right and then this of course can be any any sort of object now I'm going back over here um, We can see, uh, I can now uh, put, I can get the object, I can put get the object, and then uh, it has a bunch of methods, so I can you know get all the keys and go over all the keys, so I can get my set of keys, I can put a bunch of things, I can of course remove things, uh, remove key value pairs, I can replace things with a particular key uh, with a new value, uh, I can still get the size, uh, in value, so uh, yeah, it is very useful. You know, this is based usually is implemented uh, with the hash table. Um, so, so those are uh, the the main interfaces. Uh, and the last thing is that these are just interfaces. All of these, right? Uh, so uh, each one of these can be implemented by different actual Java classes. So, for example, the map going back here. This is the map interfaces. These are all the known implementing classes. Uh, some of these are special ones, but the ones you actually use for your programs are a hash table. So most commonly you will use a hash table to implement the map. But uh, you can also use a linked hash map, which will keep things sorted. Um, so when you print them up, or a tree map, which also keeps them sorted in a different way. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah, there's different ones. So, the thing to know is they all implement the map interface, so they all work the same. They just have different time times. So some operations are going to be faster in some of these than in other ones. Uh, and the same for the list. Uh, for example, the list implementations are over here. Um, so a list can be implemented as a linked list or an array list or a vector, and they all have different time. Uh, signatures or they have they take different times for different operations 
uh, and you can look into that. Uh, but the nice thing is, you know, if, if you just stick to the interface, uh, your program will run fine. And then if you find that it's running slow, you can just, you know, change it. Just do a little change, change say link list to array list, run it again, you know, see if that's fix your problem or not with the running. Uh, so it should still run perfectly. It'll just maybe run maybe faster, maybe slower. It depends on what you did. Okay, so that's it.